So I want to talk about data, but actually, more importantly, probably talk about, about data science. Before we talk about data science, let's talk about, let's talk about data. So, so all of us, doesn't matter what our background is, we're used to, in our daily lives, the experience of just the ubiquity of computing and software and the connection between ourselves and devices and, and the internet. So it's sort of everywhere. You know, so unless you're driving around in an 1870s Mini, you know, you've got more computing power in your average family car than the real-time guidance system that took Apollo 11 to the moon and back in 1969, which is pretty impressive. But actually underlying all that, what's really astonishing actually is the, um, is, is the data, is the data that gets, that gets generated every day. Uh, so two and a half quintillion bytes of data every day from financial services, mobile services, social media, tweeting, texting, medical devices, online services, all of that, two and a half quintillion bytes and quintillion, that's a, it's like a, it's a great word, it's a sort of, it's a sort of word that your, uh, your kids come out with when you ask them how many sweets they could eat, well, at least a quit. <laughs> At least, a quint at least a quintillion, Dad. Maybe, maybe, maybe two, but quintillion ten with 18 zeros after the end of it. So two and a half times ten, 18 zeros at the end of it, um, which is you know two and a half billion gigabytes, and you probably get about 16 gigabytes in your smartphones, um, or it's about 200,000 Mitchell libraries of data every day in old money. So it's just this, you know, this torrent of data. And what, what's sort of interesting and what's driving that is really the connection to the internet of people and devices. So right now we've got about 15 billion devices connected to the internet. 2020, we're gonna have about 40 billion. And, and it's that growth in devices, actually the next wave is mostly in, in sort of sensors that's really gonna drive that volume of data up from that two and a half quintillion bytes by about 4,000% annually. So, it just, so at some point you just go, actually just, you know, just hang on a minute, it's just all billions, zillions, gazillions. So, so what, what is the question? And, and the question really is, what is it we're gonna do with all that data? You know, that's the question. What are we going to do with it? in two forums, one that allows us to create wealth and economic opportunity in, in a for-profit context, but the other, which is just as important, is, is how we use that data in a not-for-profit social enterprise perspective to, to really help solve some of the world's deep problems associated with climate change, food production, food security, those types of things. So data, data science is this really interesting sort of blend between science, which is really about what's the hypothesis that I'm trying to understand, and engineering, which is let's just get going and build something that's really useful, and sort of artistry and craft that wants to wants to create and visualize new products. It's a real sort of multidisciplinary mix of skills and people who are very collaborative and sort of very open to new ideas and to working with people from other disciplines. And so when you get some really great data scientists put together with some really great domain expertise folks, whether in health or whether in agriculture, uh, then, then some really interesting things, you know, sort of start to happen. So we've got, there's about 1.7 billion people in the world today who've got mobile phone access, but don't have access to a bank account. And 1 million of those 1.7 don't have access to any health care. So wouldn't it be good, wouldn't it be good if we could use all that data that gets generated to create a new generation of mobile health and mobile uh, finance services. And, and we can do that, we can do that. So this, this combination of a sort of sea of data and all that computational power that we're now familiar with really changes the model as to how products get created, data products that can be useful in a for-profit context, but also for those 1.7 billion folks in developing countries can also be use, useful to generate very sustainable, very affordable, and very useful products, particularly in finance and particularly in health. So there's some, there's some really great opportunities um, there. 
And the real opportunity, actually, um, and, and this is something we want to kind of get to uh, quickly at the end, is, is there's a shortage of about 300,000 data scientists globally. It's an enormous number. The question is, how, do, how does Scotland, how does Glasgow, how does Scotland stand up, lift up, and take some of those, uh, those opportunities and sort of bring that home? You know, so five miles down the road, you know, half the world's sh shipping tonnage used to be built on the Clyde, and that's not there anymore. Uh, so what are we going to do to create you know, new sustainable economic opportunities, both for profit and not for profit, you know, within Glasgow, within Scotland? And, and it strikes me that you know, we've got a strong engineering, strong science heritage, but we're always very good at teams, communities, collaboration, and those things are really important for data science. So I've got a couple of uh, very quick examples for you, um, just to kind of give you an idea. One is simple, and the other is a little bit more complex. So the simple one, this is our dear green city um, that we'll all recognize. So this is our dear green city that's overlaid with basically emergency admission data from the health system for respiratory disease and respiratory disorder. So these are people that are showing up with chronic respiratory problems at E&E &E in a non-elective way. And so that's not good for, 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 for the folks that are involved in that. It's also not good for you know, the health system itself. This is the data that's pulled down from air quality monitoring sensors that are all over the city. This one is the worst one in the city. This is in Hope Street, just beside Central Station. Buses are up and down there all day. <laughs> Interestingly, there's two, two, two things on the screen there. There's a 2.5 micron particulate and there's a 10 micron particulate. And those are both particularly bad in getting inside your lungs and inside your bloodstream. The dotted lines are the World Health Organization's safe limits for that. So you can see from that that pretty much all the time, if you're wandering up Hope Street, don't breathe too deeply. So you know, the, que the question then is, you know, what's the connection between this and this? And there's a connection there. So this is an example of how, how can we build products quite simply from data that's available that we can join them up, provide those to the health service, provide those to patients themselves. So those could be apps, those could be tweets, that whenever we see something like this, we can, we can inform people. We can inform people, you know, that, that to be aware and be more conscious. We can inform the health system that you might have some unannounced customers arriving at your door. So there's some very simple things that we can do with data that's lying around our, our, our city. And so we need to bring that together. This is an opportunity for people to come in, work with that data, build useful products, either for a, in a, in a for-profit or not-for-profit sense. Um, an area that's really interesting to me is how medicine and biology change to become information sciences, to become data sciences. Because when we talked about all that data that's flying around, there's a new form of data that's starting to fly around, and that's us, okay? So 23 chromosomes, 3 billion DNA-based pairs, but we can sequence our data and we can understand the causes of disease within, within each of us as individuals. So an opportunity to transform how medicine is delivered from a sort of one-size-fits-all approach into something that's very personalized based on the profile of individual patients derived from the data that is generated from their sequence data. And so the opportunity to look at something like a lung cancer tumor and then visualize it uh, in terms of interaction between genes that are associated with that particular disease is work that's going on right now that is accelerating, still not there, but certainly in the next 10 years will be. That's a great example of the use of data, data science, to really solve problems that all of us are involved with as individuals. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you.